Hello. Today I will be talking about The Hobbit. I believe this came out, I think, 2010. It's a long time ago. It's more of a family uh, weight game. I got it uh, several years back to uh, try to entice my uh, daughter into playing uh, board games with me. <laughs> Didn't really work too well. I mean, I did get her to play it a couple of times. But uh, anyway, let's talk about how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is unfold the board and place it in the center of the table. You'll then get out your deck of uh, event cards. You'll have four stacks of event cards numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. And four stacks of adventure cards where it says adventure there and event there. And labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. You'll shuffle each of those stacks separately. Then you'll take the event cards and place them on, on top of your adventure cards and that will give you a total of four decks numbered one, two, three, and four. Each player will then receive one of these character boards. You'll then place a green marker on the initiative track, a purple scoring marker on the cunning track, and a red scoring marker on the strength track. And the rules say for your first game, you should put the markers two spaces up from the bottom, like, I, like I've uh, shown here. For a standard game, you should start one space up from the bottom. And for a more difficult game, you start all the way at the bottom. So I've set up for three players and uh, put the scoring markers as if we're playing uh, our first game. You then shuffle your dill, <laughs> shuffle your deck of dwarf cards and deal five to each player. Of course, this would be their hand uh, kept secret from the other players. But for me, playing solo, I'm just going to deal them face up. Then you'll take the remaining deck of dwarf cards. And just place that somewhere near the board. So as you can see, each of my players has five cards in their hand. Each player will then get three of these provision tokens. Kind of looks like a little Limbus uh, bread or something. But anyway, they're just called provision tokens. So each player will get three of those. You'll shuffle your dragon tiles and place them face down somewhere near the board. Place the Bilbo figure on bag end. And it's got a reminder that each player gets five dwarf cards and three provisions. Then you place the Smaug figure over here on the other end of the board on the Kill small Smaug the dragon space. Then you just place the remaining components, which are your jewels, uh, provisions, and dice, and the ring token somewhere near the board. And that's set up. It's all pretty quick, and we should be ready to uh, show you how to play. Alright, so how do you play? Well, play begins by any player revealing the top event card of the uh, number one event deck. Now, when these cards are revealed, they can be one of three things. They can be a travel card like this that says the party advances, and it's got a little flavor text. When you get one of these, that means the party will be moving along the track. So when you draw a travel card, each player will secretly choose one of their cards that they want to play. And after each player says they're ready and they've chosen the, their card, they'll reveal them si simultaneously. The lower card will go first. So they will get to move Bilbo one space and reap the reward um, shown there, which here would be get two provisions. The second lowest card would go second, 
So they would move Bilbo here and they would get uh, two strength. So they would get in, increase their strength uh, track by two. And then whoever played the highest card would get to go third. And in this case, they would get two cunning. So they would move themselves two spaces up on the cunning track. And I didn't show this, but when you get two provisions, of course, you just grab two provisions and put it in your play area. The cards that were, that were played will go into the discard pile, and then each uh, player will draw back up to a hand of five dwarf cards. Some of these spaces may show an icon with an X through it, meaning if you're uh, if you move Bilbo onto that space, you actually lose and go down the track on that one. So in this case, you would lose one initiative, and you'd move your initiative marker down one. So when you're playing these cards, you kind of try to play depending on what space you want to get. If you were, uh, again, got another travel card and you wanted to get this to initiative, you would try to play uh, the lowest card, or if you wanted to get to the to strength you would try to play the highest card. Of course you don't know what the other players have. Another type of event card you might draw is an ability card. So in this one you can see player of the highest dwarf card receives this ability card. So again each player would play one of their dwarf cards and whoever played the highest would get to take this ability card and put it in their play area or they can use it at some time in the future. Um, this one lets all provisions on the dice, which we haven't talked about how the dice are used yet, but we'll get to that. But this one says all provisions on the dice count as double. Now these are abilities are one use cards, so once you use it, then it just gets discarded. Now one thing the rules are not clear on is um, it does say when you have a in the in the rules when you play a dwarf card um, toward uh, moving your party when you have a party advances card that you do draw back you immediately after you play your card you get to draw back um, another card up to your hand of five um, when you play a dwarf card to receive an ability card the rules do not specifically state that you get to draw cards back um, at that point to be back up to five. So, you know, I tried looking at the forums uh, on Board Game Geek. There doesn't seem to be a specific answer to that. Some people say yes. You all, whenever you play a dwarf card, you immediately draw back up to five. I think some people even said in some of the uh, other language uh, versions of the rules, like Spanish or French, that maybe it does state that. But in the English language rules, it does not state that. So. Um, I guess that's up to you uh, whether you want to draw every time you play a dwarf card you draw back up to five or the only time you draw back up to five is after you play uh, a dwarf card when a travel card comes up. Another type of event card that might come up is a gift card. So for instance this one, the Trolls Cash, just says each player may give two provisions to receive one cunning. Sometimes you might get one that just says each player has their choice of either uh, getting one uh, initiative, one cunning, one strength, or two provisions or something like that. But in this one you don't play any kind of dwarf card uh, to get this benefit. Uh, in this case you would have the choice uh, to give up two provisions to gain one cunning. Uh, lastly, um, you could get a card like this which depends on the number of players. So in this, in a two to three player game, it's a party advances and you use that just like any other travel card. However, in a four or five player ga uh, game, it would really become, instead of a travel card, it becomes a gift card. And in this case, each player just receives one strength, but no traveling occurs. So again, you'll draw an event card, do whatever it says, Eventually, you will, by playing the travel cards, you will get Bilbo uh, either to this space or in a four-player game, he will actually move right into the adventure space. 
Uh, the first one is the Battle of Goblins, but uh, I think in any uh, any other but a four-player game, once you've gone through all the travel cards, you'll end one space behind the adventure space, and in that case, after you uh, do that uh, that uh, travel space, you just go ahead and move Bilbo into the adventure space. At that point, any event cards that may be left in your deck, you just discard until you get to the adventure cards. Each player then receives a number of provisions shown on the adventure space, so in this case two. So each player would get two provisions. Then the player with the highest initiative, which remember that's your leftmost track here, so in this case after, you know, I just kind of set these you know, after you've traveled to the space, some of the players will have advanced among, along these tracks. So in this case, whoever has the higher initiative. Now, in, in this example, this player and this player's initiative is the same. So if that case, if there's a tie for highest initiative, then the players will each uh, reveal a dwarf card. Not from their hand, it actually says each player will reveal a dwarf card from the deck and the highest card will then uh, get to draw the adventure the first adventure card otherwise if there's not a tie the player who's got the highest initiative draws the first adventure card so in this case we'll say it's this player he reveals the first adventure card and the adventure card you know, it'll have a little flavor text. It'll have like a title, Fight the Goblin Hordes. It'll show what you have to get to overcome it. One shield and four axes. And then your reward will be two gems. Now, <clears throat> now to attempt any adventure, you must have at least two provisions. If you don't have at least two provisions, then you have to pass. And when you pass the card you just pass it to the next player in clockwise order and you also have the option if you don't want to attempt it like you don't think you can pass it um, then you can just pass it also but if you are going to attempt it you get to roll five dice so we'll say this guy's going to attempt it so he rolls five dice he got a provision a provision a provision and two axes now you can re-roll a number of dice equal to what is uh, to the left of your cunning so here he can roll up to two uh, dice if his cunning was up, up here he could re-roll up to three dice you can add to your score a number of axes depending on what your strength is so here he can add one axe if his strength was up to here he could add two axes and uh, here if his um, initiative was here he would already have the one required shield but it's not it's here so in this case he only got two axes he can add one axe so he's got three axes but he got no shields and he still needs four axes so he didn't complete it but he can reroll two dice so he's gonna reroll two of these dice and he got a shield and two axes so actually that's two three four and a shield so he completes it without even adding that axe there. So then he will get two gems, put that in his player area, and this is completed. And it just goes out of the game. Then the player to his left will reveal the next adventure card. And then he has the option to um, attempt to complete it again. He must have at least two provisions to even attempt it. Um, if a player doesn't want to attempt it, if they don't think they can pass it, they can just pass it and it goes to the player on their left, and then that player can attempt it. If a player does attempt it and they fail, they must draw one random dragon tile and look at it and uh, take whatever. So in this case, he has to lose one initiative and one provision. So he would go down one on the initiative track and then he would have to discard one provision. Then since he failed, the card is uh, 
pass to the next player to his left who may then attempt it. If that player doesn't want to attempt it or he attempts it and fails and has to draw a dragon tile, um, then he passes it to player to his left. Once all players have either attempted and failed or passed the card, then the card is just discarded. If, if at least uh, one player did not attempt it, if everybody just passed, then the dragon just moves one space forward um, toward Lake Town. Some of these dragon tiles, if you fail and draw a dragon tile, some of them have this icon which also so in this case you would lose two provisions and then the dragon would also move one space toward lake town if the adventure card is discarded because all the people all the players um, either passed or failed it then the next adventure card is drawn by the player who has the highest initiative and then again he has the choice to attempt it or pass it clockwise so you'll do that till you go through all the adventure cards so there's uh, let's see five six seven in that first adventure deck so once you've gone through all those adventures then you'll uh, begin by choosing the first event card from um, deck two and again, you'll play that just like you did with the event cards at event one. There'll be a travel card or an ability card or a gift card. And you'll start traveling along. Now, if you land on this space, you do lose a cunning, but you also get to take the ring. And you keep that until another player ends up landing on one of those spaces where they get to take the ring. But the ring gives you the ability to change any one die face to whatever you want it to be. And again, I mentioned you may have gotten an ability card that lets you uh, do something, either count, you know, you might get one that lets you count single die results as doubles or, uh, or um, count provision die result as double or one that maybe lets you re-roll some dice. But again, ability cards can only be used once and once you use it, then you discard it. And so the game will continue next. You'll get, you'll move and continue to go up your um, initiative, cunning, and strength track. And when you get to uh, the next adventure space, again, you'll take the number of provisions there. Each player will get that. And then you'll go through the event two adventures. Finally, you'll get down here to the escape from Workwood Elves. <clears throat> and you'll do the deck three adventures. And finally, you will... Uh, get to the kill smog the dragon where you can see you actually get three uh, provisions when you get here and you go through the uh, deck four adventures now i've shown that um, <clears throat> either people uh, everybody passing event will automatically advance smog along the track or um, you know some of the dragon tiles you draw might adv advance smog if Smog ever reaches Lake Town, um, the game ends immediately as soon as he reaches Lake Town. And then the winner is just whoever has the most gems at that point. Otherwise, um, if the players get to the kill the Smog the Dragon adventure space and go through all the adventures there and complete all the adventures there, then the player who uh, has the most gems wins the game. Now that's the way it is in the English rule book. Um, when I was looking in uh, Board Game Geek at some of the forums, um, it was said it was said that in uh, some of the other like French or Spanish versions of the rule book that it says if Bilbo ever <coughs> uh, meets Smaug on the track, that he then immediately goes. Uh, to the smog kill smog the dragon adventure space and no longer travels along the track so i don't know i don't have those rule books uh, the english version doesn't say anything about that just says you keep going till you get there 
and if uh, Smaug ever reaches Lake Town, that the game just immediately ends at that point, and then whoever has the most gems wins. Now there is a variant in the English rules that says if Smaug reaches Lake Town, um, then all the players just automatically lose the game if Smaug reaches Lake Town before players have finished going through all the adventures in the fourth deck. And there's another variant that says uh, players get the uh, bonus uh, besides the gems they've collected. They get the bonus um, shown along the side here um, for the lowest uh, attribute they've raised. So on the lowest attribute they have on one of their tracks, they get the bonus shown there. Um, so that's it, really. It's uh, not a very complicated game. Again, like I said, the rules, there's a few things that aren't, uh, aren't really explained. Uh, so, again, other than a few ambiguities in the rules, it's pretty simple. So why don't we go through a few example turns and see how it works in practice. All right, I've got everything set back up how it should be at the beginning of a game. So uh, let's go through a few example turns. So first thing, uh, somebody will draw an event card. We'll see what we got. It's a travel card. If we had four or five players, it would be a gift card, but uh, we're only playing three players, so it's a travel card. So uh, the party advances, so what's going to happen is each player will choose one of their cards um, to play. And again, remember the lowest card will go first, second lowest card will go second. So you play depending on what you want to get. So we'll say this guy, he kind of would like to get that strength, so he wants to kind of play a what he thinks is going to be a middle middle card so maybe he's going to play as 29 so he kind of just puts that out there face down this guy maybe he wants to get that uh, too cunning so he wants to play his highest card so he's going to play 52 so he puts that face down and we'll say this guy maybe he wants to get those prov provisions no he wants to get the strength too so He's going to play what he thinks is going to be a middle of the road card. So he's going to play his 41. So once everybody's played their card, everybody reveals, shows what they played. All right, so the lowest card is 29. So this guy got the lowest card. So he discards, he moves Bilbo 1, and now he gets two provisions. And then he gets a card back in his hand. The second lowest card was the 41. So he moves Bilbo, so now he gets two strength. So he moves his strength uh, marker up too along the track, discards this card, draws a new one. And the highest card was this dwarf. So this guy gets to move two, and then he goes up two on the cunning track. And then he draws a card back into his hand. And then this card just goes out of the game. All right, so now we draw another card. Now we got Elrond's Council. This is an ability card. So now everybody, it says that the player of the highest dwarf card receives this ability card. So this guy is going to play his highest card, which is a 54. So he'll put that out. This guy's highest card is 53. So he's going to play that. And this guy's highest card is a 51, so he'll put that. Then everybody reveals at the same time. And the highest card is the 54. So uh, this player will get the Elrond's Council ability card. Everybody else discards their cards. And now, depending on how you interpret the rules, um, either everybody draws back to 5 at this point, or uh, people just have the cards that they have until uh, the next travel card which um, again I said the rules are not clear on that I'm gonna I'm gonna play it since the rules don't say the English rules don't say you draw another card at this time then I'm gonna stick with that 
so uh, I'm going to stick with everybody just has the cars that they have but again uh, I think some of the uh, other language rules say you do draw a card and some people interpret the English rules to say that you do draw a card so that's going to be up to you and your reading in the rules but uh, now we draw another event card um, we got a travel card a party advances two to five players so again you kind of decide what you want to get and try to go for that so uh, this guy maybe he wants to get this two initiative so he's gonna play his lowest card so he's gonna play a nine this guy he thinks he like like to get the two strength so he's gonna play his highest card which is the 38 and this guy he'd like to get the two initiative also so he's going to play his lowest card which is a six all right, then everybody reveals at the same time, and the lowest card is the six, so this guy uh, discards that, so he gets to move Bilbo, and he gets the two initiative. All right, the next lowest card is this one, so he moves Bilbo, and he gets one cunning, and uh, the next card is this one. Um, so he moves Bilbo and he gets two strength and then everybody's going to draw back up now because that was a travel card everybody's going to draw back up to five cards so everybody's going to get two or if you played it the other way then everybody would just get one And then this trail card just goes out of the game. Alright, uh, then we draw the next event card. Now we got another ability card. Player of the lowest dwarf card uh, receives this ability card. You get to double the effects of one shield roll. So, in other words, uh, if you roll a shield, it's worth two shields instead of just one. So, again, it's the lowest that gets that. So this player's lowest is a 19. He's thinking he's not going to have a very good chance at getting that. This player's lowest is a 16. And this player's lowest, he's got a 7. Alright, so then everybody reveals and he reveals that he got a seven so he's going to end up getting that ability card so that goes into his area and these others are just discarded all right we've revealed the next event card it's a travel card in a five player game it would be a gift card so i'm going to go ahead and i'll play this um, off camera until i get to the first adventure space well, so far I've just skipped one card, but I've drawn another event card, and it's a travel card. And I just wanted to show now, in this case, nobody probably wants to be the lowest. Um, so they'll probably try to play one of their higher cards, because the lowest is going to lose an initiative. So, you know, he says, well, I definitely don't want the lowest, so I'm not going to play my two or three. My highest is a 44, so I'm going to play that. This guy's thinking the same thing, so he's going to play his highest. And this guy also is thinking the same thing, so he's going to play his highest. And everybody reveals. And unfortunately, the lowest is 44, so this guy moves Bilbo, and now he's got to go down one on the initiative. So he's way down there. He'll draw back. All right, the next lowest is... 48 so he goes there and he gets too cunning and then the highest goes there and he gets one st oh that's the wrong guy this guy he gets one strength all right then this card goes out all right you'll see there's just going to be one one more travel card allowed oh but our next one is a gift card so this one 
Each player chooses one of the following. So they can either take one initiative, one cunning, one strength, or two provisions. This guy's going to take one strength. This guy thinks he's going to take one initiative. And this guy is going to take one initiative also. And then this card's just discarded. Alright, I'll play ahead again until I get to the adventure. Alright, so we just completed this last travel card that puts Bilbo here at this space. So when he gets to this space, you just go ahead and move him into the adventure. Now everybody gets two provisions. Alright, so I've given everybody two provisions. Now the person with the highest initiative is definitely not this guy. This guy's is here, and this guy's is here. So this guy is the highest initiative. So now we just discard all the event cards. There was only one left. And, oops, knocked over Bilbo. So we draw, this guy draws the first adventure card. Now he has to get one um, shield and four uh, axes in order to win two treasures. Now, he's pretty confident because he already has, you know, he's above the one shield and he and he's got two axes so he only has to roll two axes and he gets two re-rolls so he thinks he's going to attempt it so he grabs the five dice he rolls now there's two axes right there he doesn't even need the rest of those because that's two three four and he's already got the one shield because of where he is on the initiative track so he's successful on this so this gets discarded and he gets two gems So since he was successful, now the player to his left draws the next adventure card. And he got Escape the Goblin's Lair. He's got to get six axes and three provisions. Well, if you don't roll the provisions, you can always pay for the provisions um, out of what you got. Um, so he's not worried about the provisions, but worried about he's a little worried about getting six axes because he's not his strength is actually low he hasn't gone up on that at all so he says he's gonna pass he's not even gonna attempt it so that goes to the player to his left so again as a reminder you always have to have at least two provisions to even try it which he does um, he's got two axes on his strength he'll only have if his thing is here he'll have two re-rolls uh, he's for sure he's got the provisions and he may roll some so he th he thinks he's gonna at least try it so he takes the dice rolls he got one two three axes and three provisions so he rolled the provisions but he's only got three axes four five he needs one more axe so he can re-roll two dice so he's gonna go ahead and re-roll two of these provision dice because again he can pay out of his provisions for anything he's short so he's gonna he's actually he can reroll uh, two dice one two so he's gonna reroll these two and hope for at least one axe and there he got this double axe and a double axe so he's got plenty of axes he's got four five six seven without even counting what he's got on his board and uh, that's one provision. He needs three, so he'll just pay two of his own provisions. And so he's successful. So he completes this, and he'll get three gems. So three goes in his play area. All right. So now we're back to this player, so he'll draw the next adventure card. He needs uh, Slay the Great Goblin. He needs one shield, which he already has, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Five axes, which he's got two, and uh, two uh, provisions, which he could pay if he doesn't roll them. So, yeah, he says he's going to go for it and try it. So he got one, two, three, four, five axes, so that's what he needed. I got one provision, so he can just pay one provision out of his supply. 
and then he already has the one shield so he's successful on that so he gets three gems and uh, now this guy who hasn't got anything yet now he's gonna try the next one he just needs to get three provisions so he could uh, just pay it if he wanted to but of course he'll go ahead and roll and he rolled two provisions he does have one re-roll because his thing is here so it's what you're at or below so he he can uh, re-roll one die so he'll re-roll this one and there we go he got his third provision so he doesn't have to pay anything so he completes that and he gets one gem but I think you can see how it goes then we go ahead and go through and finish these last three adventure cards and once those are all complete um, then we would begin drawing from event two and uh, moving on and again if you fail if you attempt and fail an adventure then you have to draw a dragon tile and take this one you'd have to pay two provisions and move Smaug one space forward again so you go through until um, you reach uh, the kill the smog the dragon space at the lonely mountain and go through all the adventures um, and then whoever has the most gem gems wins or if smog uh, ends up advancing to lake town then even if you haven't uh, gotten here and completed all the adventures the game just ends then and then at that point whoever has the most gems wins or if you play the variant um, if Smaug reaches Lake Town uh, before you've gone through and completed all the uh, deck four adventures then just all the players lose so that's it uh, it's it's a fun family game it's nothing that I would uh, pull out to play with my uh, you know my gaming friends or anything like that to play on a game day but um, I like I said I've played it with my wife and daughter a few times and I would play it with them some more but <laughs> again I can't really get my daughter to, to play board games much at all anymore without some kind of bribe or something I will say I don't really get a lot of Hobbit theme out of it. I mean, I know you've got Bilbo and you're moving him along, but I, I just don't really get much of a theme out of these strength and fox for cunning and, you know, just playing these dwarf card for their numbers. So, I mean, it could be anything really. So, I mean, if you're looking for a game with a good uh, Tolkien uh, theme, Hobbit theme, yeah, I, I wouldn't say this is really it, but uh, if you're just looking for kind of an interesting uh, family game with a, a little bit, a little tiny smidge of pasted on Hobbit theme, then uh, this isn't isn't a bad one. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.